All right, this is a sort of a starter video on commodities. It's a big, big theme. Uh, I think it's important that we talk about it because I think any investor who wants to kind of get to sort of intermediate level or higher in terms of their sophistication, they've got to understand dynamics of the commodity marketplace. They've got to understand some of the idiosyncrasies of commodity pricing and how that can impact the fortunes, either positively or negatively, of a given stock, and also kind of the periodicity of commodity cycles which differ from stock market cycles and economic cycles. So it's a domain where you can really hedge and get sort of protect yourself from different kinds of risks. And the best thing about commodity exposure is it can protect you from the mother of all risks, which is inflation. And we're in an environment now of very loose monetary policy. We're starting to see inflation in different places and commodity exposure can help protect you from that directly. So let's get into some of the details though, because there are nuances here. And, you know, you can go out and buy bars of gold, for example, or buy like barrels of oil in theory, but then you've got other problems, right? You have to store it. You have to insure it. There's certain costs that you have to bear. It's actually more efficient to own an oil company or own a gold mining company, which basically gives you direct exposure to the underlying commodity. And as the price of that commodity goes higher, the, the, the prospects of this company get better and better as well, and probably the stock price of this underlying uh, of, the, of the equity will go higher too. So one way to think about commodity exposure is to look at where there's a play on it in the equity markets. With agricultural commodities, a good play on that, an indirect play admittedly, would be something like John Deere tractor. So as ag prices go higher, there's going to be more demand for ag equipment and Deere is a good play on that. It's a great company to begin with, pays a dividend, etc. So this is another way. It's a little less direct than directly owning a mining company, but it's the same sort of thematic way to think about it. And then furthermore, you need to, as a sophisticated investor, you want to understand how the pricing of commodities can impact certain companies that might buy commodities as inputs. And so here's where you talk about, say, Coca-Cola. What are the inputs for Coca-Cola? Okay, water sugar and counterintuitively aluminum right because they put the soda in cans and sell it and that's the container that they use so if the aluminum price starts to go up that actually can be a negative on for coke because that's one of their inputs and the price of that goes higher that can hurt them as long as they are unable to pass that price along to consumers and in general it's it can be difficult for consumer products companies to pass through pricing so like Cereal companies, likewise, if the price of grain goes higher, that's their primary input. But other inputs, for example, might be cardboard. That's the box that's sort of analogous to the soda can, right? Is the price of cardboard, which is a commodity, if that goes higher, General Mills and Kellogg's may have negative impact on their profitability. So you want to be able to think about pricing inputs of certain commodities and how they may affect certain companies positively or negatively. And then this should give you some idea of how to play movements in commodities. So for example, if you have a view that the price of aluminum is going to fall, one way to play it is somebody who benefits from a decline in that price. So you could go long Coke. It would drive maybe not totally drive their financials, but it would have an incremental impact. Okay, so these are themes uh, of how to play different commodity prices. Now, the other nuance with the commodity marketplace is the nature of commodity price cycles. And this kind of depends on the type of commodity. So let's talk about agriculture pricing. If let's say you have an increase in price of say soybeans or corn, well, next growing season, probably farmers are gonna grow more acreage of those specific plants, right? And so you have sort of a self-correcting mechanism of agriculture prices from growing season to growing season. But within a growing season, you may not. So this is one thing to think about where marketplace participants can see a changing price and then react, but they may react with a lag. Okay, so this can really have a role in metals pricing. And the reason that is the case is because there's an enormous lag time between when the price of a metal starts going up and how long it takes to open new production capacity. So new production capacity would be the opening of a new mine, getting it to full production, bringing the ore out of the ground, and then smelting the ore, right? So you have to do all this infrastructure building. And there's going to be, often with metals, an enormous lag 
between when there's sort of extra demand and when more supply comes on stream. And so during that period, which could be decades sometimes, or certainly many, many years, you can actually have enormous moves in the pricing of an underlying commodity. And then it has its concomitant effects on certain companies. So if you're long a copper mining company and there's a shortage of capacity of copper in the world, you're going to do very, very well if the price of copper starts going higher. It's probably going to keep going higher because new supply might be years into the future. So this is one of those things where supply and demand dynamics have a certain lag. And so you can have pricing idiosyncrasies that last for a long, long time. Okay, so these are just some introductory themes to think about. And then I want to leave you with a very, very useful resource, a book called Hot Commodities by Jim Rogers. He was one of the uh, lieutenants that worked for George Soros back in the 1970s. Very, very good investor and not a bad writer, actually. This book, he actually shares a lot of these thematic elements, and it'll get you to kind of think about commodities as a component of your investment you know, your investment strategy. You want to have exposure to it. How can you do it through equities? And then how do price changes in commodities impact the stocks that you already own, positively or negatively? So that's some things to think about. We're going to return to this topic in the future because there's a lot more to discuss. So as always, I thank you for watching and I hope these videos are helpful.